Lights is basketball, presented by Coors Light. They started with a party right there in the tower. As the night goes on, we're getting into the retro feel as number seven Texas takes on Sam Houston. Chris Beer, the head coach of Texas Hoops, promised to party at the tower. If those students showed up for the early season games, they did. So they were outside the grid before two o'clock to get their wristbands. They went in the footsteps of the tower, free food, free beverages as well. Chris Beard was there to take photos. And how about this? Leads the students inside this historic gymnasium, the centerpiece of the Texas Athletic Department. And boy, those seats fill fast. With that, hello and welcome to the historic and iconic Gregory Gymnasium. Lowell Galindo here with the Texas legend Lance Blanks. And we are surrounded by more than 3,000 of our closest friends. First time we watch the game in here, we're watching volleyball and everybody's thinking, wow, what a basketball can pull off the game in here. What does this mean to you? Well, I feel like I'm in a time war and I've gone back to the old SWC. G. Riley White, which was at Texas A&M, Moody Coliseum, Archery Court in Houston. It literally feels like we've gone back. The fans are in the building. I feel the temperature heating up. This game here, Lowell, for me, is all about what it feels like. This is college basketball, where the stage is as important as the matchup. Gregory Gymnasium first opened in 1930. And this, that the first game inside the grid since February 26, 1977, as Courtney Ramey brings it up with the Texas Longhorns. One of those throwback look beauties in an immediate timeout by Ramey as the defense was there. JV on May for Sam Houston, pounded number three. Hey, how about that for a build up? A little <laughs> anticlimactic. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Lance Blanks. All right, we'll get that momentum back. We'll get that energy back. Well, Ted Houston, two and four on the season. We talked to Jason Hooten beforehand and said his defense is ahead of schedule. This is, though, an offensive team. Uh, and it's no surprise that they get Texas get that timeout with their pressure. Courtney Ramey. Man, this place is electric. Only his second three ball since the season opener. He was one from eight from outside since that opener. Just take this all in, everybody. Savion Flag ruins that moment. Texas A&M transfer. Flag could be a big time matchup issue for this Texas team. Well, he's part of the new college basketball with all the transfer, grad transfer from a power five, Texas A&M. And in talking to their staff, they need Flag to be good. They need Lampley to make shots, and they need Ray to handle the pressure. As you saw him applying pressure to Carr, those three are their pillars on either end of the floor, Lowell. Same starting five for the second straight game for the Longhorns. And there's Marcus Carr, a little out of control, going to the hoop. Carr's the guy that has struggled with his offense, scoring the ball in the early part of the season. So the go-to guys for the Bearcats going to be number one, Savion Flag, second team, all whack preseason pick, and Demarcus Lampley, right there shooting the three ball, leaving it short, the first team preseason all-conference pick. Back to the other side, and the three ball knocked down by Jaden Ray. Ray is the third guy of their big three that they need to be good. They feel like they're a shooting team. They can make shots. They can stay in this game. Turnover. Trey Mitchell gets slippery with it going the other way in a hurry is Lampley. That will stay with Sam Houston. So Chris Beard is the architect of this. Architect of Texas basketball and this monumental rebuild and the architect behind Unite the Family and doing things outside the box like playing inside the grid. Nice pass to the corner. And that rattles home for J.B. on May. He's had a really good start defensively and now with the shot. Well, and that's a bonus. Now, you need May to play well. But again, we talked about the other three. 
flag Lampley and Ray. Now Mays making shots. It's about confidence. Texas has done a good job of suffocating people early. Not the case here with Sam Houston State. Yeah, dangerous as they're hitting the outside shot as Ramey airballs it. Because for Jason Hooten, he's a three ball center coach. He gives his guys freedom to hit from the outside. But so far through the first six games, they're only hitting 31.7% from the outside. Since the shot just for whatever reason are not falling. Yeah, and I've asked, I talked to him about that. I thought I asked, was it the pressure, the level they're playing? And they think it's just normal in that sometimes you can't or you're not making shots because you're getting good looks. Tonight, you're getting clean looks if you're Sam Houston. They're knocking those down. Also, Lowell, I want to take into account the environment. This is yeah. not a cavernous building. Things are closer and tighter, so your depth perception can be impacted in a positive way. We're seeing that here early with Sam Houston State it's knocking down shots. More along the lines of what Sam Houston is yep. used to playing in. Yep, there you go. Than this Texas team. Better said, better said, yeah. Now no. Andrew Jones has checked in the game, and Andrew Jones has been fantastic off the bench, 13 and 15 in his previous two games. He's really provided a scoring spark. And Texas looking for some offense here. Yeah, this is the first for Texas being down this much this early the only other time they were down this this quickly when they got knocked in the face if you will by gonzaga so this will be interesting to see how texas responds tristan ipe picked up that foul number 12 in black nice feed inside allen and up and under is courtney Raby. Well, that's where texas excels on their backdoor cut they do a great job of delivering the ball, but also making defensive pe defenses pay if you get out of position in terms of eyesight and where you are on the floor. Fly too easy all the way. Chris Beard will not like that possession, Lance. No, he won't. Epe set a great screen out high, which created the activity to get the easy basket at the rim. Sam Houston State is extremely aggressive right now on either end of the floor, Lowell. Allen, contested shot, no good. Well, Hooten said with we'll Savion flag, they need him to get 15 to 20 a night. Said that before the start of the season. He's getting them 19 a night. So right where he wants them. Ray loses his footing in transition. Allen with the breakout layup. And Timmy Allen, the leading scorer for this Texas team at 13.6. That's a great way to get your offense going. Use your defense to create some momentum. Get some easy transition baskets. And Allen has been another key for Texas, particularly of late, leading this team in scoring with 14 a game. Here's Ray, jitterbone quickness, Mitchell. Did it get the block, but certainly contested and altered that shot. Yeah, that's something Sam Houston State works on. They typically have someone in the corner. That time it was vacated, so there was no way for Ray to finish around the rim or find someone on the perimeter. And Sam has seen some interior size as Andrew Jones gets that floater. They have not seen the interior size with the skill of these Texas players. Yeah, and, te and Texas is a bigger team, but they're not a huge team. So, Sam Houston State should be able to contend with the size that Texas presents. It's the ball pressure that they'll have to overcome. Ravy takes it away. Jones saving it. And his foot on the line, but a heck of a play there by Andrew Jones. Man, this has all the emotion, all the energy. This is college basketball. College basketball on Longhorn Network is presented by Coors Light, official sponsor of the Texas Longhorns, and in part by St. David's Healthcare. The best is here.
1930, named after this man, Thomas Watt Gregory, was one of the first 13 graduates at the University of Texas, former U.S. Attorney General under Woodrow Wilson, had some great memories here. Started fundraising for this place in 1926, opened up in 1930, had some amazing Final Four teams here, the great Slater Martin, starred inside this building as well. This replaced an old wood gymnasium on campus that burnt down. And when it was built, it was a palace, one of the largest buildings in all of Austin. As Ramey Hound's flag creating a turtle. Back in the 80s, this was a place, low that we would come play a ton of pickup games. You would run it and even practice. <laughs> we didn't go the direction they're going today. Christian Bishop for three. Coming off a 12-point night against Cal Baptist, and it's a 7-0 run to give the Longhorns the lead. Well, that's his second three in the last three games, and something that Texas Bigs offer, they can step away from the basket and knock them down. Ooh, sweet move, Tristan Ipe, spinning off the glass. Well, Ipe, he's their center, only 6-5, attacks the feet. He plays bigger than he is and able to finish over an outstretched arm of Bishop. Great basketball here to start this one off. Timmy Allen throws it away. Ramey saves it. That's going to be a backcourt violation. <laughs> here is that drive by Ipe. Yeah, he's got him in isolation. No one comes to help. And Ipe has extremely big hands. He's also extremely strong. So that's a basket that they literally wanted and attack Bishop. They now bring in their seven-footer, Kuba Kowalski, the first seven-footer that Sam Houston has had at the D1 level. Yeah, and he's from Utah State, a grad transfer, extremely bouncy. Wow, Javion May has had a really good start to this game. And Sam Houston is bringing the physicality. Yeah, what they're doing is spreading the floor and taking Texas out of isolation and using their strength to finish around the rim. Eight points by the Bearcats inside the paint. Car for three. Just grazed the rim, back to Jones who thought about it. Jones working on Dante Powers. Car no good again. Kowalski pulls down the rebound. And the car really struggling. Four for 16 now in his last three games. If you include this one, three point, three games, if you will. And he needs a bucket, starting to look like he's losing confidence. Here's Fly, baseline so powerful. Good defense there from Bishop and Jones. Horn slowing it down, will find it. And this is a spot Texas has not found themselves in since taking on number one Gonzaga. They've dominated games early on, and that's a travel. And here's the biggest difference. Early on, it's been Texas forcing the turnovers. Here now after that one, they've got more turnovers than Sam Houston. Yeah, the, over the last three games, they've Texas has forced 70 turnovers. That's something we'll need to watch for both teams. I can guarantee you that staff there, Coach Beard and his crew are watching that because to your point, Right now, Sam Houston is forcing the activity and is the aggressor on either end of the floor, Lowell. And this is the best player with the ball that we've seen. Yet another since isolation. Gonzaga. Going up against Texas, the kick out, Randley No. And Kowalski was trying to keep that alive, but off him. Got a good one here. Early on, the Bearcats with a two point lead inside the grave. They've got the Big 12 championship, and they are going into the NCAA tournament as the number two overall national seed. What's new? Every year, Karen Elliott and Texas Volleyball in contention to win a national title. This is no different. They'll start off the first round of the tournament against Sacred Heart right here, Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Time. This is their house, so Texas basketball made sure to reserve <laughs> them seats right at courtside to say, hey, thank you for letting us borrow your turf for a game. Yeah, you got to rip.
represents because they've gotten it done, especially in the last few years. So Texas basket, men's basketball can't come in here sleepwalking. They've got huge shoes to follow with the women's volleyball team. Long. This is the best environment on campus. Yep. When it's women's volleyball in this building, nothing beats it. Ramey is at the stroke, working early on. He's now up to seven points. Well, and that's a difficult shot. If Texas is going to live that way, Sam Houston has to let it roll. That's a hard shot to duplicate and make. Jaron Cook checks into the game, unleashes a three. Hooten's okay with that. One of the reasons he says guys like to play for him is he lets them let it fly. Well, that's true. He really worked today a lot on the defensive end of the floor. This is where they didn't want to give up a lot of easy baskets. Oh, nice little shovel pass in the seven footer is there. But he's going to get called for the foul. That will go against. Kowalski, here's that shot. Difficulty high here from Reddish. Yeah, they cleared out the side and let him work. If you fade away like that, I won't name names, Lowell. Oh, you gosh. get on me, but that's difficult shooting a fade away on the baseline with no help. But honestly, if I'm Sam Houston, I just shake his hand and go back to the other end of the floor and live with that result because that's almost unguardable. Cunningham to the line. Cunningham was up at the party at the tower taking photos with Texas students. Wearing jorts, by the way. Do you have jorts in your wardrobe? Well, I have a question. Yeah. To address your question. Yeah. Why do you do your hands like that when you ask, do I have jorts? <laughs> I'm, what, very, what's I'm the, very animated. You're very animated. Yeah. You're very animated. <laughs> And I just get in my head the image of you wearing jean shorts and all in my all wow. in my wardrobe and stuff. Wow, you're, you're too fashion forward for that. Yeah, here's an area where Texas has excelled defensively. You see them extending with the little two-one-two action in the backcourt. We'll yeah. see how Sam Houston handles that pressure. Given power some issues, they get it up to Epe. Still plenty of time to work with them out of control. And Tristan Epe threw it away. Great observation, Lance. Yeah, they did. Texas did a good job. They kind of wear on you. It's a little bit tokenish. Then you saw when the trap happened for Sam Houston to play a little faster than they wanted to and got the turnover. And that's turnover number four. Sam Houston feels that they can keep it under 10. They got a shot in this game. Kick out to Carr. There we go. Struggle over to work his car. That's huge. I like it. Carr didn't hesitate there, especially after struggling so much of late. Yeah, you're talking about a guy that averaged 19 points per game for Minnesota last season, and he's down to seven and a half. Mitchell with some defense. But Sam Houston gets the foot back, and that ends a 7 nothing run. And Sam Houston really just wants to hang around. Coach Wooten talked about it. He wants to get to the end, have a chance to get in the game as Carr does it again. This time on the right wing. Back-to-back -back -back buckets for Marcus Carr. He has been number one ranked transfer this season. Flag double team. So where does the offense come from? With no Lampley on the court, just save you on Flag. Flag's gonna take it himself. That is a next level move and one. Well, he did a great job on the drive. You'll see Mitchell close out. He closes out on the wrong side. Watch him close out to his left. And then the avoidance of the charge. That was absolutely beautiful by Flag taking the hit and getting the finish. Watch here, just little slide to the right. Flag's a guy, he's a shoe guy, Lowell. I talked to him before the game, he typically wears the shoe of the opponent, wears the colors. I asked him, where's your orange, where's your orange? He said, I can't find that color. I'll have to go with mellow yellow tonight. Yellow, Says he got yellow. it from Harden. Oh, Flag almost took it away from Mitchell there. Good ball movement from the Longhorns. Off from the free throw line, that's been an issue for this Bearcats team. They're at 55% for the season, as Flag has called 
for the foul there. Yeah, you mentioned the, the free throw shooting being an issue for Sam Houston State. They had a great comeback against SMU in their last game. Coach Wooten talked about it. In fact, Lowell, they were only down by six. And that man there, flag, went to the line, could have brought it to four and missed a couple of free throws. That is certainly an area of challenge. And this young man here is a great pickup. He's taking, oh, yeah. filling the shoes, and even more so than the young man Nuttall, who they played against last game, plays for SMU. Nuttall, ironically, comes out, makes the first three of the game, and for the rest of the evening, only scored two points, and they felt pretty good about the way they defended him after he played for them and done so well at Sam Houston the year before. Yeah, how about that? Being a little awkward, not all. The Southland Conference Player of the Year last season for the Bearcats transfers, and they have to face him in the fifth game of the year. Texas has a six-man tonight with the crowd. Oh, yeah. Rebound pulled down by May. No good on the putback. Yet fun yet last. Oh, this environment is absolutely sick. Arguably one of the most exciting in terms of crowd involvement games I've seen Texas have. Oh yeah, we've certainly done. Jaden Ray running the point. He's frenetic, energetic, but a size mismatch with Mitchell. Yeah, surprised they didn't try to take advantage of it. Done a better job of exploiting it before now. Ramey has been everywhere to start this game. Boy, he's been really under control and playing both ends of the floor. Oh, there's a big foul on Timmy Allen. That's going to go against Tristan Ipe. Gregory Gymnasium, your thoughts. Texas women's basketball on hand to watch this one. We'll see him next in action Wednesday against Jackson State. We'll see it right here on LHN, 7 p.m. Central Time. Man, that is a two-headed monster when it comes to basketball coaches on campus with Vic Schaefer and Chris Beard, two guys that have been on the cusp of winning national titles. Yeah, and they've got popular teams and their respective sport and that image right there you talk about culture part of your culture extends beyond the locker room in your team it's what you build around campus and we've talked about it a lot law in the environment and i think texas men's basketball is right on the cutting edge the genesis of starting a culture here with this men's basketball that the students can rally around you can certainly feel it with the injured energy in this building tonight. Yeah, that's ultimately what Beard and Schaefer are doing. They played an exhibition game in here. Just doing something that sparks the interest that they hope can then carry over to the Irwin Center and then to the Moody Center next season. Yeah, and you, you talked about you got to have a lot of things working for you. People that are excited about it. Good players winning, obviously. It looks like all of those ingredients are here early in the season for Texas. Ray pressured. Nice save to May. May! No, he did it! Javian May! They didn't do that back in the 1930s. That needs no descriptor. You saw it on the screen. That was posterish. Lowell, what a finish. That's how you break a press. That's how you do it in Chicago. Javion May hails from. Ramey trying to stay hot. Passed it up. Jones will take it. Too much. And here comes Ray to flag. Hesitation in the drive. Jones wanted the block. Flag saved it. But it goes right off the Texas bench. But Lance Blanks, I mean, this goes up with our man Jorge Bilbao. Well, and this is called attacking the rim. There was no hesitation. He literally went and was very violent in his attack of the rim. Staring him down afterwards as well. 
Well, he'll be talking about that for years <laughs> to show his kids that finish. Exceptional by me. And the huge edge for the Bearcats in points in the paint, 14 to 4. This is as good as they can hope for. As Andrew Jones gets that one to drop, and Jones four points off the bench. He's really found that comfort level coming off the bench. Jace Feveris starting over him. Chris Beard doesn't put too much stock in who starts. But it's one thing to get the guys to believe that. As Feveris heads over to us, he's about to check in. Yeah, well, Coach Beard says he has seven starters. Ray gave it off. Jones. Two on one to Allen, and Allen is fouled by Ray on his way to the hoop. Now, if you're Sam Houston, you've got to try to control pace, not turn the ball over, which is something Texas does a great job of forcing. And the unselfishness there by Jones gets it to Allen. He gets fouled, and he has a chance to extend this lead to nine at the charity strike. Yeah, Bearcats did a great job weathering the initial storm. This is the second one. Can they hang around as Texas makes it seven? And Allen now makes it an eight-point game. Fevers checking in. And that's going to send Marcus Carr to the bench. What a good start for Carr. That shot starting to fall. Yeah, and I think one of the areas in way Sam Houston can generate some offense is when Texas switches, particularly on possessions like we saw a little while ago. And you had Trey Mitchell out on the small. You might see that with Bishop when you do some ball screening. You've got to exploit those switches that Texas likes to get involved with. Sam Houston needs to get to Marcus Lampley, this man, going. One of the top scorers and the Southland last season should be in the whack this year, but the shot not falling. Nice feet inside, flag, waited too long. And from the backside, Jace Febris, his second block in three games. Dare I say, Febris' defense has been much better than offense this season. Yeah. Are you about to compare Jace Febris to Matambo? <laughs> As I raise one finger, I swear I thought you were get going. that out of here. No, he likes to take too many charges to be compared to Matombo. Athleticism and buying into Chris Beard's system on defense. And there is Lampley, rattles it home. Wow, that is a difficult DeMarcus shot Lampley. for Demarcus Lampley. First team all Southland Conference last season. Shot 39% from distance last year. Good feet inside, Bishop. Great help there. Lost it, and here he comes. It's Ray, but there's going to be a foul there on Timmy Allen. Let's go back to this block, though, by Jace Pepper. Well, this is an excellent help inside. The pass also was great, but that's how you help out a teammate. And then, of course, Lampley comes off the ball screen. Evers gets hung up, and he makes them pay. How about Sam Houston? having all the guys they've needed to show up, show up, plus more. Yeah. They couldn't have done much better, I think, than they've done thus no. far. Coach Wooten has got to be proud, not only of his game plan, but of his guys executing it incredibly well here in this first half against Texas. He check, it's good. Jaden Ray from outside, known for his quickness in engineering this offense. But also showing a good outside shot there, only shooting 30%. He went one of eight from three against SMU in that loss. Uh, they have the mark of a good team. They know they need to keep shooting, considering how much they've struggled. They see themselves as a shooting team, naturally. That will stay with Texas. A two-point game. Texas leading 28-26. Jaden Ray is fun to watch. He's a ball of energy. Not the biggest dude, but big heart. Showing the stroke from the outside. And Bearcats within striking distance, down two. This is men's basketball playing a game that mattered. It was 1977 inside Gregory Gymnasium. Apple Computer Incorporated in California. Jimmy Carter sworn in as the 39th president 
The King passed away at Graceland. And the Tyler Rose taking home the Heisman Trophy. It's been far too long. Had a really nice renovation here, put more money into it. It's been the home of Texas volleyball. And Lance, a lot of work went into just getting this place ready for this game. A guy, Rob Lazar, and his crew, Timmy Allen, takes the outside shot. They had to take the hoops over from the Irwin Center. And since, since the building is so old, there's not like big bay doors or anything. So they had to take apart the hoops, yep. bring them in, assemble them, and then all the tape that we see down to mark the court, that was all done by Rob Staff. Yeah, Rob's been amazing. Not, he's, he's been a trooper for Texas basketball for a number of years. I get to sit by him, Lowell. Yeah. He's, a, he's feeding you the information. Yes, he's paying he, us to tell us. That's right. He's a star in his own there he right. Is. Wave. <laughs> hey, wave. The camera's on you. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. we go. No, Rob is uh, he's a trooper. I mean, he takes care of so much around the program, the uniforms, and making sure these guys have all they need. He was even helping me identify hey. people on the court before the game. He's going to have a late night because all of this has to go back to the Irwin Center to get ready for women's basketball. And this place has to be ready for NCAA volleyball. Somewhat out of control there is Damon Nicholas, standout freshman from Duncanville High School, won the 6A title with Duncanville in 2019. He had some high major offers. Yeah, they obviously like what he can do and trust him. There you see it again, Lowell, too. That was another isolation where Sam Houston excelled. Allen nearly lost it. Kick out to Carr, who drops it in. And Marcus Carr erases an 8-0 run by the Bearcats to give the lead back to the Horns. And Carr is having probably his best shooting night that we've seen. Yeah, and he made Ray pay for helping. He left him, couldn't get back in time. Mid-range jumper no good by Kean Scroggins. All horns will try to extend the lead. They try to force looks where they don't typically come from. Now, this is a little bit of an interesting lineup that Sam Houston will have to weather. Wow, Carr wanted to take on Scroggins, and Carr wins now into double digits. Yeah, you got a two-minute game if you're Sam Houston. You're down five at Texas in a hostile environment. Nice weaving through traffic by Ray to Lampley. Could not get the bounce. Under two minutes here in the first half. Jones for three. In and out. Sam Houston running. Andrew Jones lost him. Cunningham was there for the block. Longhorns with numbers. Jones. A little turnaround and floats it in. And Andrew Jones now with six points. Sam Houston got going fast, got out of control. Cunningham saved that possession. And here we go. Ramey wants everybody fired up as well. Nothing run by the Longhorns. A game of run so far and a game of energy and emotion. Marcus Carr, however, we've been waiting to see him break out with his shot. Well, he made Ray pay there for going to help. He made his shots early. He missed early, then he made. So the confidence is there. The lane is wide open, letting him work in isolation there against Scroggins. And then the pace went in Texas's favor. He's going fast, but look at the poise to not run over the defense. The nice little turnaround with the finish by Jones. Jones and Carr are the offensive pillars with this lineup, but now you got Ramey, so you got a big three on the floor to score, Lowell. Carr's got that scoring look in his eyes. He got the ball against Scroggins. He wanted that one-on-one -on -one and ultimately won it. 1.15 here left. Flag kick out. Blocked 
Timmy Allen. Got and the shot, shot clock, clock did not. No, it reset and didn't need to. Shouldn't yep. have reset. So they're saying four seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, that's a good. They're going to put five now on the shot clock. So you can catch. see it here. Allen gets the block, shot clock, then resets. So they'll keep it at five seconds here for Sam Houston. Under a minute left to play in the first half. Good catch by official James Breeding. There's flag, quick trigger on the three, no. Ramey and Febris fighting for the rebound. Longhorns come up with it. Nice, fast-paced first half of basketball. This is the fastest offensive lead that we've seen Texas play. Carr, will he stay hot? He does! Marcus Carr! That's now the most points for Carr in the Texas Uni. He's got 13. Well, how about his teammate, Ramey, finding him? Is he's got the hot hand on the floor for Texas right now. One four flat with Ray at the top in isolation. And a foul as Jaden Ray goes down. With 1.9 on the clock, here's that bucket by Marcus Carr. Well, that was Ray again getting caught with his hand in the cookie jar, if you will. 1.9 left on the shot on the clock. This will be a catch and shoot, low. Christian Bishop checks in. He will guard the inbound. Yep. So a size advantage there over Damon Nicholas. And Chris Beard was just telling them as he entered the game, hands up, making it impossible for this guy to get it in. Awesome crowd. One point nine on the clock. Flat got it off. No good. Texas will go into the break with a 38-28 lead. This first half inside the Greg has lived up to all the hype. The atmosphere is amazing. High quality basketball as well. Texas up 10, going to halftime. College basketball on Longhorn Network, presented by Coors Light, is brought to you by thezebra.com. Compare and save at thezebra.com. Boars Light here inside the iconic Gregory Gymnasium, the heart of the UT campus. It's number seven Texas over Sam Houston, who's putting up a good fight, 38 to 28. With that, welcome courtside, Logan Galindo here with Lance Blanks. We knew it was a matter of time before Marcus Carr got going. Just one for 10 in his shot over the past two games. So far through the first 20 minutes, five of eight, 13 points. How's he getting it going? Well, I think it's just pushing the envelope. He missed badly early, and he stayed confident. Kind of like you just need to see one go through the basket. Mitchell finds him, and you see the double team. He knocks down that shot, and that just opened up the floodgates. Ray got caught going in and helping. Then you see the little ISO. A lot of space there also low. Now you're feeling good. You can just chuck one, a little jump hook over the shoulder. And then where is he? There he is. Randy <laughs> makes the pass. And then, of course, Carr feeling it, getting the whole Gregory Jim going. Bro. And that gets us to the game summary presented by thezebra.com. Texas shooting a really nice 54%. Having some success from outside. They've gone to the line eight times, one for Sam Houston. But where the Bearcats have had a lot of success is going inside, 16 points in the paint. Texas one shy of their season high so far now with four blocks with another one from Jay Febris. Well, and the other place that the Sam Houston has excelled is turnovers, only six. And I, I challenged the staff and they were so confident Think of it, Texas have, has turned people over 70 times. That's almost unthinkable yeah. over the last three games. Tonight, only six turnovers by the Bearcats. So Coach Hoot 
you and your staff do do a good job of handling pressure because Texas is one of the best in the business right now at the college level in turning people over. And they've been extremely sure-handed, Sam Houston has, the entirety of the first half, Lowell. Bearcats have to get it to number one even more. Savion Flag, a really hot start. Eight points in the first half. He gives it up there to Lampley, who's short. Lampley gets the rebound and a nice little bounce pass inside to Javion May, who had the highlight of the first half. Oh, a phenomenal pass there. You didn't see it coming. He takes it all the way in, Lampley, and then drops it off for the finish. May finds it out loose ball. That play we're talking about, the absolute monster dunk over Timmy Allen. Eight point lead here for the Longhorns. Played at a faster clip than we've seen them in the first half. Put together some good offensive possessions. Here's Epe. Low post gets by Mitchell and May no good on the put back. Back to Epe. And here's Savion Flag. Transfer from Texas A&M just forces it off, but does the trick. He'll go to the line. But he's so creative with the ball. The flag is never really gets out of control. And he's also a pretty big guy as a wing. He's a big wing, about 6'6, six, 6'7. Six, six, he's also played at the power five level. So this doesn't really scare him coming into this environment. We talked about it earlier, though. He's got to start knocking down free throws. He missed some big ones against SMU. Whole team at 55% from the strike and 0 for 2 here tonight. 0 for 3 now. He mentioned his big game experience as a sophomore at Texas A&M. Led the team in scoring. Rebounding as well. And he will be a mismatch in the WAC. All part of Unite the Family series here at the University of Texas. And Jamie Albay gets whistled there for the foul. Oh, I thought that was an excellent job of moving his feet. The referees have done a great job this year, I think, at the collegiate level, not calling ticky tack fouls, forcing the offense to earn their keep at that end of the floor. Swing pass to Randy Mitchell battling EK. Inside, and that's into the hands of Lampley. The pass to Ray. A good body control to get the finish there off the turnover. Not only the body control, he took that ball, put it in the left hand, and stretched it out, and really negated any pressure or potential block shot by Ramey. Excellent okay. finish. How fun is it to watch Jason Newton over here to <laughs> our left? He is playing defense the from eyes, his too. spot on the, the bench. The man is all intensity. Yeah, and he's a Highly respected coach, Coach Hooten. All these guys know him. Coach Rodney Terry, he and Coach Beer, they respect him and what he's done at Sam Houston. Yeah, a lot of success in the Southland Conference. Now in the WAC for the first time. And they've already announced they are going to the Conference USA next. Here is Flag, and there he is, Savion Flag. But the huge shot from outside, three-point game. Well, and Sam Houston doing what Texas and Carr did there late in the second, first half, being that whenever your man helps off, find guys that can score and shoot and make them pay for double teaming. Jones with the response. Sandra Jones with nine points. Well, there's another example. You can't rotate early off of these guys like a Jones, a Ramey, a Carr, flag. You've got to stay with these guys because they can score it from beyond the arc. Shots coming earlier in the possession tonight for this Texas offense. Flag to Lampley, down to Epe. Working on Jones, good Chris Paul movement. Lampley tries to float it, he's hit. Oh, they're going to call this as a charge. Timmy Allen is there to pick it up. Yeah, Allen comes over to help. That charge happened because he floated forward. Some guys are able to stop and go straight up. Here you'll see it goes off of one foot. Almost impossible to go straight up, Lowell. You go off one foot. Had he jump stopped, he could have had his balance and just gone straight up. But he pays with the charge for going off of one foot. Great help by Allen. Good call there. Excellent call. 
the right call. He also got outside. He let Allen got outside of the restricted area to take that charge. There's your jump stop. Yeah. There's your jump stop. Yeah. And that is something. Beard gave the thumbs up because they stress this constantly in practice. Get into the paint, jump stop. Yeah, and if Coach Benders, if you're watching, I know you're smiling. That's what you used to hit on with players for many years. Jump stop, jump stop, jump stop. Tight defense by Carr. Flag may have gotten away with a walk. And a bucket for Savion Flag, who's been fantastic here to start off the second half. Stripped. Here comes to Marcus Lentley. He's got Flag. Wow. The pull up for the three. Wow. What do you think? Oh, man. You got Flag for a potential layup. Oh, no. And it ends with Ramey Six point. in the corner. Five point swing. swing. Yeah. Five point swing. You don't get the two, and you give up the three. Those kind of mistakes, if you will, because that was a decision, actually, not a mistake. It was a poor decision. I don't think you have to go for the home run if you're Sam Houston in that situation. Hey, and Flag wasn't laying that up. <laughs> you don't think so? Oh, no. He was trying to rip it down if he had a shot. Well, we saw that happen earlier. Nice pass. Here's Ray into the paint. The floater, no charge this time, and gets the whistle. Jaden Ray. But here is Courtney Ramey. The man is really coming to life with 10 points. Well, we got a duel taking place. Ramey gets the clean look from deep. Splashing it. Texas with the lead. By the time he left, yours light is brought to you by Whataburger. Get your hands on the Whataburger Hats Green Chili Bacon Burger. Available for a limited time. Yeah, Andrew Jones flexing on him, embracing that Manu roll off the bench. You see the first three games, 6.7 points per game since 13, and now makes it three straight games off the bench, all in double figures for Andrew Jones. As for the first time tonight, the Bearcats convert on a free throw shot. When you talk about Jones and that the third of the first three and he went one for nine yeah against northern Colorado and since he's 15 for 24 after going to the bench or coming off of the bench I should say so that was a great strategic move not only for the team but also for Andrew good hands there by Ipe almost like coach Beard has a totally different player in Jones offensively getting late in the shot clock here five on the clock for Ramey and Ramey is bumped and bailed out by Jared Cook. Don't count that shot. Boy, that's almost the same call that May had in that same area of the floor of Sam Houston. That late in the clock, you want to force the offense to have to make a play, especially that far from the basket. And going back to Jones, it's somewhat what we expect with so many new faces. The guys taking a little time to settle into the role, and I think we're seeing more of that now as good defense there is Allen. He's gonna go and jump ball before the shot clock as Jamie Almay picks himself up in the bottom of that pile. And they're gonna say a one second on the shot clock for Texas. And you see how the roster is made up three freshmen, eight transfers, four returners. Returners playing a big part, but this is not what Chris Beard necessarily will do year in, year out, but what he had to do in the first season. They want to go out and recruit guys that will be four year players as Randy has hit hard. And that is a shot clock violation, shot clock no violation. foul. Yeah, that was a flag good helps him off. Defensive possession there by Sam Houston with the late clock situation. And that's an example of what I mean. When you get late, I'm going to force the offense to have to make a great play. But you, you saw the graphic there with who's back. Two of those four returners I mean, were the leading scorers in Ramey oh, yeah. and Jones. Yep. And with all of the offense that's come here, they've had to adjust 
their games, including Jones going to the bench, as we talked about a few moments ago. Flag outside, no good. And a nice save by May. And we got a whistle. Texas fans here at Gregory Gymnasium don't like it. Yeah, and so there are two things that Sam Houston does that is keeping them in this game, Lowell. One, they play hard. By yes. hard, they dive on the floor. They don't give up on plays. They almost play irrespective of what's going on with the clock I mean, in terms of the, their score and the time. And there's a benefit to that. And there's also hope. Sometimes that can hurt you. From outside, Cook no good. Wow. Put back, flag no. The flag has been busy here in the second half. Here comes Marcus Carr. The other thing I want to say is Sam Houston is not afraid. Well, that's the second thing. There's a, this team is fearless. Coach Putin has them, looks like, believing that they can get a lot done here. And that's a flag on Tristan Ipe. That would be number three on him. So Ipe, top rebounder for this Sam Houston team, saying, my bad, he's going to the bench, however, with three, so that will be a factor. And this is a Sam Houston team that, we know the Southland, we've done a lot of Southland games through the years. Yep. They have been a factor every year in the Southland, consistently flirting with 21 seasons, too, under Jason Hood. Yeah, and their football, as you know, has had some success of late, but they see themselves as a basketball program, and they take a lot of pride in what Coach Hooten has done and built there irrespective of a very good basketball or football team on campus. And Jared Cook called for the foul as Ramey got a good step on him. And so Southland, it was forever, 89 to 2021. And then really all of this was started with Texas and OU deciding to go to the SEC. So they find a home in the WAC. And that's where the Texas four from the Southland ended up as Mitchell and one opportunity. So they go to the WAC, but the Conference USA is more of a football conference. And so with the Bearcats trying to make it back-to-back -back FCS championships, that was a better home for them on the football front. So that's why they will split from those Southland schools and go to the Conference USA. And all of that, as you know, is incredibly difficult to keep up with. Oh, yeah. But it seems like every day, certainly every season, there's a, an evacuation from a conference to a new conference. And it's it's coaches, too, now. Yeah, coaches. Brian coaches. Kelly going to LSU, yeah, Lincoln Riley go. to USC. What is going on? Golly. Santa Claus going to start doing <laughs> Thanksgiving, and the turkey going to move to Christmas, maybe? God. At this point, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Mitchell three-point play, and it's a 10-point lead for the Longhorns. 13 minutes left here inside Gregory Gymnasium. Yeah, just turned on Longhorn Network. Laying at the Irwin Center. We're here in the historic previous home of Texas basketball from 1930 to 1977. Something that Chris Beard would like to do once a year as Mitchell got a piece of that. Deflections, block shots, the defense is still working. Yeah, and he's gotten caught Ray a few times around the basket in that situation. He needs someone in the corner to bell him out. There's no one there at his size, 5'9", 5 5'10". Five, it's going to be incredibly difficult to finish amongst what looks like to him the trees. Yeah, Lampley needs to be that guy not on the court right now. Only three points on one of seven shooting. Flag with the rebound. He is going to be a problem in the whack. And a whistle. So that's going to go against Brock Cunningham. Number two on Cunningham, yeah, Mr. George himself. To your point with flag, Coach Hooten, and we talked about him being excited with the role he's playing. Again, they thought they would have a huge loss with Dunall, but Flag has come in and shown himself to be worthy of picking up all of that slack. What Coach Newton wants to see him have big games against so-called lesser competition. Because he's fine at the Power Five level as he's showing tonight. 
Andrew Jones picks up the foul. Gregory Gymnasium, and they've been in it since the jump. Don't wait months. Volleyball, and Texas is the number two overall seed in the NCAA tournament. So they have the opportunity to make it to the Final Four without leaving this gymnasium. 10-point lead here for the Longhorns. Low Galindo, Lance Blanks. Nice feed inside to the seven-footer, Kuba Karwowski. And that was designed as an out-of-bounds play, perfectly executed. Beautiful fat pass for the big fella, who in my estimation is the best leaper in the gym. Well, he's the biggest. Andrew Jones with the three-point salute. And Jones now with 14, the second three ball of the night. But Sam Houston, Lance, they are here, they are in this, and they had a run. They were getting blown out by 24 points. Last time out against SMU, they had a chance down the stretch. I saw that game, they had several chances. Yeah, they got a shot anytime with this guy on the court. Savion Flag, the senior transfer from Alvin, Texas, through Texas A&M. Had a career high 31 points earlier this season against Nebraska. He's more than halfway there tonight. Great on ball defense there. Uh, Ray really moving his feet. Allen blocked by Flag. How about the out of bounds play? Where Watch the young fella come off the screen. No one picks up the big Huba. Just right in his wheelhouse. Great execution. Mitchell over the seven footer. How about that? Mitchell. This adds a whole nother dimension to your team when your bigs can step away from the basket and shoot threes. The way Texas is big is showing they can do. And well, they're gonna say that Flag stepped out of bounds, stepped on the white tape, and here's that three-point shot by Trey Mitchell. Well, Kuba got caught with his hands down, and you hear people talk about hands down, man down. That's what they mean there. The big fella Kuba technically should have had those up early, really, to, really to deter. Mitchell from shooting a three ball. Still no Lampley on the court. One of the top players for the Bearcats that had a slow start to the season. And that is thrown away by Courtney Ramey. So 9.50 left. 11 point lead for the Longhorns here inside Gregory Gymnasium. Chris Beard looking to see his guys finish. Move to five and one on the season. Should be a battle here, down the stretch. Flag is looking for the pass, lost the handle. Up top to the seven footer, and good hands by Ramey, but that's gonna be off text. Yeah, that's a good look, the double came. Anytime you get flag in isolation now, I think Texas is going to double. They wanna get the ball out of his hands. He can pretty much score on anybody in single coverage against Texas. Uh, it looks like a, a good idea to get it to flag off the inbounds. He's a little frustrated, just slipped off the hands, and that's going the way of the Longhorns. Here's the push. Ramey inside. Oh, gets it past Karwowski. Well, and Sam Houston was caught. Flag was still looking at yep. Hooten about losing the rock. Texas sped it up to get that bucket. Yeah, they stopped playing, essentially, and I thought... Flag is the one who created that. And now Texas has a sizable lead. And in the big fella unable to stop Ramey. Texas up 13. Don't address, don't adjust your screen. That is the atmosphere that has been created 
by this Texas Longhorn Ball Club. But speaking of atmosphere, Coach Hooten knows his ball club well. He knows what they can do and can't do. He said we rebound the ball. He's showing that they're dominating Texas on the offensive boards. And also, he said we take care of the ball. Texas has turned people over in the last three games 70 times, so they've taken care of the ball. This is a game, low where you can't take your eye off the wheel. I believe the last three offensive possessions, that's exactly what Sam Houston has done. It affected their defense and allowed Texas to go on a mini run and extend the lead to 13. Well, a lot of possessions right now going into the hands of this man, Savion Flag, trying to take over himself. And a nice move, cannot finish. Ramey with the save and stays in bounds. Carr pushing it. Tough shot, no good. Allen with the offensive rebound. Do not count the bucket foul before the shot. Yeah, and, and to the point I made a moment ago about taking your eye off the wheel, there was a momentum shift, shift in spite of the timeout. And you see it in the body language. You see it in the aggression of the players and the way they, they being Texas, is attacking the rim at either end of the floor. It's almost like a boxing match with counter punches. That's what this game has been about. But right now, Sam Houston is on the ropes, and it is a game of wills, as I see it, Lowell, from here to the finish line. So number 12, Tristan Ipe checks back in. He's the leading rebounder for Sam Houston at nine per game. He's got three fouls. And we also see Demarcus Lampley back in. Number three has got to get going. One seven overall, one of six from the outside. Jones offensive rebound. These possessions are precious now. If you're Sam Houston, got to get a stop. Well, you've got to close it out with a defensive rebound starting to give up. Oh, pull up three. He wants it all. That's the swag. The Texans thought it was getting from the number one ranked transfer, Marcus Carr, the stud from Minnesota. Not zip run for the Horns. Ramey pounding Lampley. And there's a bump on Andrew Jones. That's going to send J.B. May to the line. Well, and you notice for Sam Houston, they're having to do this with flag on the bench. Well, easily their best player. You know what I failed to mention when we talked about Sam Houston Athletics, the baseball program. You yep. may know the former Sam Houston baseball coach, the guy that punched me in the ribs in our last broadcast, <laughs> David Pierce. Did an outstanding job there with Sam Houston for going to Tulane and then the University of Texas. And, and you're, a, you are a big time baseball guy. I mean, that's your thing, isn't it? Love it. Love it. Now, one of the other challenges is what you see there, the missed free throw yeah. by Damon. I mean, when you're shooting 55% from the free throw line on the road out of Texas, it's going to be hard to get back in that game. You can't I, knock down free throws. It's almost like fouls become turnovers yep, in exactly. a way. Absolutely right. 61-45, Longhorns with the lead inside the iconic Gregory Gymnasium. Opened up in 1930, was a home for Texas basketball until 1977. Carr, no, I was wow. gonna say no way he finishes that. But man, confidence is through the roof and he says my bad, forced it a little bit on that one. He's hungering across the floor at one foot. Two wide open for Ray, offensive rebound by May. And there's the putback. Uh, there's another one of those offensive rebounds. They sent all the small holes to the floor, to the basket. Crash that glass. Season high, 11 points for JV on May. It was set up by Jaden Ray. That drive to the basket. Oh, Jay Feveris gets the little bounce. He was one for 10 in the previous two games. 
needed that bucket and got it. And Chris Beard right in front of us saying, let's go. Get up. Make noise. And that's what you call a soft touch from Peppers. Oh, nice move. But nowhere to go for Damon Nicholas. Texas basketball. This crowd is feeding oh. off it. Chris Beard has his place wrapped around his finger. This is a run. The Longhorns now stretching it out. Longest lead of the night for the Horns at 64 47. That brings us to our moment of chill. Brought to you by Coors Light. Whoa. The moment of chill also has been the moment of thrill by Mr. Carr because he's been thrilling us all night long with the exception of his start to the night long. He's gotten hot and he's showing why and how he averaged 19 plus points last season at Minnesota. He's been absolutely fantastic here for the Longhorns. First team all Big Ten a year ago and it's going to be like this throughout the course of the season there's so much talent on this team that they will take turns being the go-to guys in the leading scores so far it's been timmy allen most nights as he is the leading scorer the car draws the foul honestly for texas you've got 10 guys yeah that can put it in the hole at some level that's part of why early on they talked about sacrifice because a lot of the guys, including Carr, Allen, Mitchell, these guys were scorers for their respective teams. Everybody, yeah. yeah. And then you had two other guys that were top scorers on their team, Jones and Ramey. Well, we mentioned it last broadcast, no one on this team is at their scoring average from a season ago. Yep, yep. Now there's Great multiple point. factors in that. They're playing with more talent than they ever have, and that's not Chris Beard's system. It is defense first, and it wasn't that way at every program these guys are coming from. Yeah, and it, offensively, it's a lot of screening and cutting and a lot of reads. The ball doesn't always end up in the same person's hands on, with play call. Lampley trying to split the double team. Leaves his short, and he's fouled on that shot. And so, down 19, though. Sam Houston is going to continue to compete. I think in this game, Lowell, there are moral victories for Coach Hooten and his group. Here, certainly the underdog coming into a hostile environment. And yeah. the Greg against one of the Blue Bugs. In terms of the university and what Texas is all about. And all about the defense. So over the last three games, allowing 46 points per game. So Sam Houston has eclipsed that. Opponent shooting 38%. Tonight, Sam Houston's at 40. 29% from three. Sam Houston's at 33. And turnovers four is 23. Sam Houston's been pretty good. 10 turnovers tonight. But that's just the level that the Texas defense, it's a combination of things, right? Let's just be honest. Combination of the defense playing well, and they are playing inferior opponents. It's not gonna be this way once they get to the Big 12 schedule. No, they'll get challenged, and someone will come in and sustain a lead through the first half, and they'll be tested. I understand, though, what the Beard is thinking with this schedule, with so much new, it's almost like before you have to worry about the opponent, you got to worry about what do we do as a team. And this has allowed them to find that. Here's Savion Flack. He's been dynamic tonight, throws that up. Andrew Jones just volleyball shots at Flag is hurt, though. He's in pain. Back the other way. And that is concern number one for Sam Houston. As he threw up that shot, Andrew Jones was there to contest it. it. Looks like he rolled an ankle. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. The left ankle. And 
you see immediately in pain, which is why he forced the shot up. And that, to this point in time, he has been the guy that has kept Sam Houston in this game with 16 points. Well, you hate to see anyone, regardless of which team, go down such pain. In depth, Jason Hooten brought up depth that they don't have the type of depth that they ideally would like. And know we're close to a team like Texas. But more than anything, this is your star player. And a nice response here by the Texas faithful. Yeah, any success that Sam Houston is going to have this year, they will need that young man there. As we've seen tonight, he offers so much for him on both ends of the floor. He's a load to deal with. Well, we talked about some of the losses. Zach Nuttall, Conference Player of the Year last season, transferred to SMU. They played him last game. They also lost Bryce Monroe, the Southland Conference Freshman of the Year. He transferred to San Diego. So you're talking about the guy that was supposed to be the foundational piece and the future of the program, both leaving in the offseason. And with the transfer portal, that's honestly going to be really difficult for teams like Sam Houston, whether they want to admit it or not, the moment someone blows up on that level, and there's been a ton of guys at that level, there's gonna be an opportunity for them to go to a higher profile program. And that's just what it is. Yeah, that's just the landscape. It almost becomes a feeder system. Yes. For the power fives and the... Ask you to Ramey, Ramey just slips. May is there. Ramey gets it back though. Wow. That's a heck of a play yeah. because he slips and Javion May is on that basketball and Ramey gets it back. Yeah, how do you get that back? That's just an excellent example for young people looking at a player and not give up on a play. He commits himself <laughs> to staying with the play all the way to the end. That's Courtney Ramey for you. <laughs> He's a bulldog. Well, I want to know, is that a turnover? <laughs> you think it? I, <laughs> good call. And a steal? A, a turnover and a steal? It's everything. It's all, it's all of it, huh? There's Savion Flag still nursing that left angle that he rolled just a little earlier. So next up, we're back Friday. For UT Rio Grande Valley taking on Texas, presented by Coors Light. It's not going to be the same, though. Can we lobby to get that game moved here? I'm with you. Yeah, well, it's going to be volleyball, so that's not going to be no, this an is, option. Vo volleyball gets precedent, but yeah, maybe we can just house. move the time. Maybe play early or, yeah. or something. This is awesome, though. Yeah, the environment has been exceptional. Car for three, no good. With the rebound, he's been fantastic on the offensive glass. Spinning and finishing. Today. One of the coolest things is Allen with the whirling dervish finish at the rim is that the fans and students, if you will, well, they've stayed here the entirety of the game. Texas up 20, and they are cheering as if the score is tied. Now, as Lantley misses everything, you got to take all of this and just get him to walk a little farther over to the Irwin Center. <laughs> if you have this type of energy, I know it can't be free food and free drinks every night, but if you've got this type of energy at the Irwin Center, it changes everything. And Texas has not been able to have that as EK rips it away. And the finish by Damon Nicholas, they haven't been able to have that on a consistent basis. Well, there have been moments, but I know the staff has really put a ton of energy. Yeah. Reach out to the community, and the community low starts right on the 40 acres with the students themselves. They essentially create or help create the kind of environment that this program would like to have visiting teams coming in to play the role. Allen, and he is fouled. 
Timmy Allen having a fantastic night. 10 points, seven assists, five rebounds. It's always in control, Lance. He started low, but the dude is smooth with that finish. And this step. <laughs> On Longhorn Network is presented by Coors Lights, official sponsor of the Texas Longhorns. Welcome back to Texas basketball inside Gregory Gymnasium. This was the scene as the students at the party at the tower then lined up to get their spot inside the Greg. And they have packed this place from top to bottom. Now, students only, there are some select VIPs in attendance as well that have been an integral part of this Texas basketball program, but this is for the students as Allen goes to the line. It's both to make it 71-51, but also a big part of this has been celebrating the past for Texas basketball. And Texas has done a fine job with that. Leon Black, legendary head coach of the Texas Longhorns. As Timmy Allen draws the charge, passed away recently. Leon Black was the head coach, 67 to 76. So coached exclusively inside here at Gregory Gymnasium. Trailblazer recruited the first black players to the University of Texas, took the team to the Sweet 16, passed away recently. Chris Beard made sure that this program was with his family, was with his son, in the last stages of Leon Black's life, just to make sure he knew he was appreciated and that presence of the Texas program was still with him. Yeah, and he was great. He was around through all the eras after he stopped coaching, and Jason as well was around them and here at the 40 Acres, and the family has such a passion for the University of Texas and what it was all about. Very sad to see him go, but a huge part of the Texas tradition in general, especially basketball. Allen out of control, and he's called for the offensive foul. Number three for Timmy Allen, who's had an outstanding night. What does that mean to you to see Chris Beard making those extended ge uh, gestures to players and coaches from all eras of this program? Well, it just gives you a good feeling about the connection to the program. Very inclusive, obviously with the students, but to your point, the history, the tradition, and I mean, he's put as much energy into that, yeah. meaning people around and outside of the core program right now as he has into the players that he has on this roster right now. Inside Gregory Gymnasium for so long, this was the centerpiece of Texas sports as Askew almost took it away. The tower, obviously the icon and the landmark for the University of Texas on the academic side. But for so long and to an extent still to this day, as Lambley hits the three, this still is the centerpiece of sports on campus because this is in the heart of campus. And it's such a beautiful building. Talked with Bill Little, story in Texas sports. So when this was first built, first off, wanted to make sure everybody knew he wasn't around in 1930 when this did open. It was in the 1960s. But this was a palace. And Texas at that point in time was still very rural around the Austin area. So a lot of people would come from outside the area. There's another three ball by Lampley. And this was everything. This was the Mecca. Those three balls have made this interesting now in the final two minutes. If you know anything about this Sam Houston team and Coach Hoot, they play to the finish line. And in the Mecca of UT Sports, Sam Houston making this very interesting. And it's Lampley with the back-to-back three-pointers. It's been ice cold to start this game. Texas takes a timeout here with 1.40 left. Yeah, and Sam Houston's got flag back on the floor. So it's not like they're without their best players. A little gimpy on that ankle, but 
nevertheless, don't, don't turn the channel yet. Sam Houston's going to fight these Longhorns all the way to the end. The question I have is Coach Beard had new guys coming in. Do those guys go in the game? Nope. He stays yeah. with what he has. And the Avery Benson's of the world and Tristan's of the world don't get to see precious minutes in the grave. Oh, it's not just protecting the win, but it's also the emphasis of these four minute segments. It's just not letting down at all. You've got the lead. It looks like they're in a spot to get the win, but that's where Beard gets the most animated when it's just a let off of attention to details and energy when they do have a lead. Here's Ray looking for Lampley. Is he hot? He almost rattles that in. And wow, that would have made it an 11 point game with 115 left. Just that close. That was all but all yeah. the way down. The only thing it did not do was finish through the cylinder. So one minute left here inside Gregory Gymnasium, 71-57. Texas trying to close this one out, using up all the shot clock. Nice vision, Askew, and one to Courtney Remy. Texas did a very good job of executing that offense and not getting in a rush, changing sides of the floor, forcing the defense to adjust. And that's one of the places they're Bread is butter, Lowell, on backdoor cuts. So you've got Carr with 19 points, Ramey 14, Jones with 14, Allen with 12. Majority of the scoring has been with those four players as Ramey misses the free throw. So a tighter game than they played recently. And the rotation has been cut down. And we've seen the offense run through a smaller number of players in terms of getting buckets. Now it's time for Jalen Tyson, Avery Brinson, and Tristan McCone to get into the game. And they love it. Well, as usual. All right, call your shot here. Yeah. Who gets the bucket? Oh, you well, Who gets the bucket? You know who's putting it up. Yeah, odds makers say it's Tristan Lacombe. No question. You called it. Lacombe likes to get buckets late. <laughs> Fans are hanging around to see this last possession. You know, if this is an NBA game, you might even take the shot clock violation out of respect to the opponent. Cole. Not here in college. Here but the Cones trying to get buckets. You don't transfer from Sol Ross <laughs> to take a shot clock violation. Oh, we knew it was going on. <laughs> we knew it. So shot clock turned off. Almost a travel there. And now, now they let this run out. So Texas will take it 73-57. Soak it in. Soak it all in. Our final score, Texas 73, San Houston State 57. Lance, this was fun. Oh, what a blast. How about the energy? Congratulations to Coach Beard and his staff bringing all the students here and bringing this back to them as yeah. well as the students. What an environment and atmosphere. Also, Sam Houston, they put on a show, yeah. Coach Hooten has nothing to be ashamed about. And I thought those guys took their eye off the wheel for that two minute stretch in the second half, which cost them a lead and then they were fighting uphill, but a great, great atmosphere and game low. I had a great time, buddy. Always fun with you. This environment makes it special. We need to do this more. Hopefully this is the beginning of something we do every year with Texas basketball inside the iconic Gregory Gymnasium. Next up in this building, Texas Volleyball in the NCAAs. And on Friday, we're back at the Irwin Center. Thanks for watching, everybody.